Hello, everybody, and my friends on the internet. Welcome back to another episode of the Reddit Asks Us podcast. Okay, guys, this episode's gonna be a little bit different. It might be shorter. I'm probably gonna go for around somewhere like 15 minutes, only, re- only, only because um, tonight, you know, I'm leaving back to my ho- like my apartment in Halifax uh, because I'm here visiting my family for Christmas and. You know, I've got packing and today's been busy. I recorded a podcast today with my friend, with my other friends for the uh, Rap Chat podcast, which is a basketball podcast that I do. So things are a little bit, uh, going to be a little bit shorter today, but, and I'm going to read off some stories today. I'm going to do a little bit less talking on my end. Uh, please, I apologize if I am not the most fluid in reading some of these stories, but some of them are pretty crazy and I think you guys will really like them. So, uh... Before we head into the podcast, if you're watching or listening on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating and also leave us a review. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Reddit Asks Us Podcast, where we have clips of the show there for you guys to watch. And uh, I'm your host, Luke Dick. Okay, so this was a very interesting one. I always, sometimes when I look uh, on Reddit, I, for a new episode ideas some weeks are better than others for the top comments from the ask reddit but man sometimes i just get lost because i can scroll in in one of these posts on 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 ask reddit and just be lost for you know like 20 or 30 minutes just looking at some of these stories and i'm not even writing any any aspect of my own script but um this is a very interesting episode today guys so this comes from ask reddit what was the moment you realized that you shouldn't have showed up on a date. Oh man, after reading this guys, I kind of got a little bit like, oof, you'd be surprised at some of the, maybe you wouldn't, at some of the absolute weirdos that are out there. But anyways, okay, so let's head in right, right into it. So this one comes from user Polyfuckery. An alleged friend told me, I like how she starts, or he, I think she says she, uh, or they, I'm not sure, um, starts with an alleged, an alleged friend told me, her coworker and I would be great together and wanted to do a double date at a festival with her and her husband. The date suggested he and I meet up the night before to get to know each other and I suggested a gaming bar I'd wanted to try. Date time arrives and he's not there. He finally shows up and tells me he had to, st- <laughs> he had to stop home to let the dogs out so they wouldn't defecate all over the floor. He then proceeds to show me a picture of a floor covered in dog shit and says, that, and says guess it didn't work. He is still wearing his work clothes. It has been three hours since work ended, and he went home to deal with the dogs, but didn't change. It takes five minutes, if that, to change, dude. He proceeds to eat the rest of the charcuterie plate. It, anyone doesn't know what charcuterie is, it's like a cheese plate, I think. I think so. I think that's what it is. Uh, I ordered... Uh, Sorry, the, uh, eat the rest of the charcuterie plate I ordered by, or he ordered by himself, and then orders wings for himself. We decide to check out a game since I have now paid for more game time. Uh, oh, I guess she must have paid for more for game time, and then he didn't show up, and then she pays for even more game time. Wow. Um, so he wants to play this mall madness game that's not even designed for two people. We settle on a playable game. It's not great. As we're wrapping up, he tells me the last date he. Oh, come on. As we're wrapping up, he tells me the last date he took here fucked him in the parking lot. He stares at me expertly. I tell him that's not going to happen, and I tell my friend I'm skipping the festival. He's shocked and thought we had a spark. That is sad. That is extremely (laughs) sad. Oh, man. Man, it takes five minutes, if that. I'm going to do a two-parter for this episode. It takes five minutes, if that, to change, guys. Come on. I don't understand how people go on a date and don't even, they don't even think about the other person, like changing or how that person might have had to pay for extra game time. Like, like, be, this is the word, guys. Considerate. That's the word of the day, folks. Be considerate, okay? Don't be an asshole. And ew, I don't understand. Okay, as if, as if this guy seriously thinks that he's going to, hook up with this, with this girl in the parking lot. Like, that's just, what? Why would you even say that? Like, that's that's disgusting. So gross. Next one comes from not Jeff, but Jeff. Uh, Not J-E-F-F, but G-O-E-F-F. When she told me my English accent was dumb 
and then repeatedly shouted out that everyone else in the bar had a dumb English accent. For your information, I was at a bar in England. Another one. What? What is people's disdain? I mean, it's kind of, there actually is kind of a meme about British people, uh, especially because of the breakfasts. I don't know. I have a small amount of British listeners. I actually have more Australian listeners. But what is up with beans, bro? This beans for breakfast. I would never eat beans for breakfast. Beans until, bro, what? An English breakfast sounds whack. I, I don't know. I've never been there. I would, I'm, I'm very, I, I'm, it's a place I really wanted to, I, it's a place I really want to go and travel, but the British do get memed quite a bit, especially for the, the teeth. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that seems like a pretty risky place to tell someone that their accent's dumb. If there's any place I would not say that, it's probably England because there's probably a lot of people there who would want to engage in a physical uh, altercation with a with a person. And honestly, I don't even care, man. There's a lot of girls there that would probably be up to fight you too if you started screaming that everyone has a dumb accent. I like British accents. British accents are the best. I find that American accents, like my accent, like my North American, Canadian, uh, Midwest sort of accent is so flat. Like I, I find it's very monotone. Like it's very, it doesn't move a lot. You know, it's very, it's very flat. It's like newscaster, you know, the weather today, like stuff, stuff like that, you know, not, not like a uh, British, it's got like, it's got a flow. It's got a flow to it, you know, like up and down, you know, it's a, it's smooth. I mean, I guess it depends on where you're from in England because a bunch of different British accents, but, um, and Australian accents and pretty, any, pretty, pretty, pretty much anybody who is like their main language is English, but they have like an accent. So like British people, Australian people, Scottish people, Irish people, uh, their accents, I think fine. They just sound better than our accents, which are just like normal. Um, Okay, so this one next one comes from Squishy Kitty. I don't really like that username. It's kind of weird. Uh, I was supposed to pick him up at his Airbnb so we could go out for dinner and drinks. Turns out the Airbnb was actually his parents' house. I thought it was weird that he lied about where he was staying, but figured he was just embarrassed so I didn't make a big deal out of it. When I suggested a place I wanted to go for dinner, he told me his parents made dinner, so he wanted to stay there and eat and go out for drinks after. I felt super awkward about having dinner with his family on our first date, but it got worse. He made me a plate of food and had me sit at a table in the garage and told me he'd be right back. Then he went inside, had dinner with his family, and then, well, I sat alone in the garage. I wish I could say I got out of there, but unfortunately, I stuck it out for the worst night of my life. Worst date night of my life, sorry. (laughs) That is super weird. That's giving me murder vibes, bro. If someone tells me to go eat dinner at a table in their garage, I'd be like, uh, show me the exit, please. I'm not trying to do that. I I get the whole idea of trying to save money, but why don't, why would you eat with your parents? Like, why, why wouldn't, even if you were going to eat in the garage, why didn't you just eat with her at least? You could make, okay, this is another thing that frustrates me. If you're limited in your abilities... Like, or if you just really don't have the money to go out and pay and you actually want to, like, you just say, I'm sorry, I want, you know, I'm sorry, not sorry, I want, but I'm sorry, could we maybe eat dinner at my parents um, just to save money? I mean, like, make the best out of a bad situation. Why don't you just ask your parents to pack you up or why don't you, well, you don't even have to ask. You can just say, hey, mom, can I pack up some of this food and bring it on a, on a, on a nice evening picnic date or something like this? You know, you this make the best out of a situation like this if you are limited. I don't understand the whole idea of 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 being so inconsiderate, guys. Inconsiderate. Word of the day. Okay. So uh this one comes from LeBrun Gems. Shout out. Um he was picking me up and texted me, quote unquote, here. A little early, so he had plenty of time to do this before I got down to his car. But he waited until I opened the door, and there were, oh man, I remember reading this one, and there was about a dozen magazine magazines, rifle magazines, on the passenger seat, and he said, hope you're not some crazy liberal, don't mind these mags, and then brushed them onto the floor. It was super awkward and cringy. It was also my first date since a rough breakup, and the rest of it was just bad, if not worse. I ended up crying in the bathroom halfway through, oh, that's so sad. 
I'm so sorry, LeBron Gems, that this happened to you. Listen, man, I don't care if you're into firearms, if you're into stuffed animals. That imagine, okay, like let's let's change it, okay? Let's say she had a ma- like, or this dude had magazines of stuffed animals about stuffed animals or something, or just anything um, on his seat, and chose to do that and be like already impose like his his belief system on somebody. Those are those are things that you talk about with somebody. What do you like to do for fun? What are your interests? Oh, I'm into collecting uh, comic books. I'm into collecting uh, figurines. I like to make Lego sets. I like to, you know, some people use firearms. I like to use firearms. Like, the, And if you don't mess with that sort of thing, you don't impose that on somebody. You know what I mean? Like, if, if that's your thing, you don't impose that on somebody, bro. Like, like, you're already looking for negativity. I don't like that at all. Especially, like, okay, say you are into, like, that is something that you do for fun. Why don't you show the person who you're going out with who you are as a person first, and then maybe you bring something like that out? Of course, it's a controversial sort of activity that people are into. So why don't you get people to know you for who you are first, and then introduce maybe, oh, I'm also into this. Is that okay? Because, listen, when people get to know you, instead of giving them a reason to, 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 to not date them or to not want to be with them, instead of giving that reason and being kind of insulting about it um, and demeaning people, uh, because also uh, there are liberal people, there is a lot of liberal people, uh, liberal people actually that I know, that do own firearms, okay? So uh, not like you, you can't generalize like that. But the larger idea is that in, yeah, instead of instead of already giving people reasons why you shouldn't be with them, show somebody who you are first, and then talk about that sort of stuff later. Because maybe once they get to know you, they say, of course, because it's a controversial topic, oh, I didn't maybe know that somebody like you would be into that sort of thing. I don't know how I'm co- how comfortable I feel with about that. Let's have a discussion about it. Tell me more. What are your thoughts? And then you move on from there. It's like I can't stand people like this, man. It's they they're looking these types of people are looking for the perfect person that doesn't exist. Straight up does not exist. Um okay, so this is this is another story from user at Dazers. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't show up for this date, but was always super proud I trusted my intuition. That's another thing, guys. Trust your intuitions. If you got a weird feeling about a date, trust that feeling or anything really, to be honest. Had a date scheduled with a guy at a nice place downtown that I had agreed to. Right before the date, he leaves me a message saying that we're going to a different place. I look it up and it's a dive bar out in the middle of nowhere, like in a field. Alarm bells are going off. I actually really like the guy and went back and forth with myself before I call the guy back and... I get his voicemail. Uh, sorry, I get his voicemail. So I leave a message apologizing profusely, but I need to reschedule the date, and I'd like to pick the place this time. Alarm bells are still going off. I wonder what caused you to like this guy. Maybe he's just attractive. And at the end, uh, sorry, uh, alarm bells are still going off, and I end up letting his return call go to voicemail. Okay, so he called back, and then you let that purposely go to voicemail to see what he said. And she says, "I'm glad I did because I had to listen." twice to believe it this grown man proceeds to scream at me calling me every name in the book calling me a bitch a stupid whore telling me how i missed out on the best date of my life with the best guy of my life and then proceeds oh god this is i I don't know if i want to say this guys it's pretty graphic and then proceeds to tell me how he would have made me all blank all over that i don't really know if i want to say that guys it's really gross i haven't it was something sexual Uh, I'll say it again. I'll put a blank and then proceeds to tell me how he would have made me blank all over that very night. Very gross. Um, I hadn't even been remotely sexual with him. So that comment came completely out of left field. That was the most happy I'd been (laughs) when, uh, when I went with my gut and skipped out on a first date. That is horrible. And, uh, I think somebody I saw commented and they were like, you would have definitely gotten raped. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. A dive bar in the middle of nowhere? What is this, Ghost Rider? Come on, like, this is weird. This is weird as hell. Weird as hell. I feel like, at least for me, you know, it's good to decide to, like, man, 
public places, parks, open places, make it, make, make your date feel comfortable, right? You don't want to put them isolated. You do not. That's one of the last things you want to do is do not isolate your date, right? You want to make them, put, put them in an environment where there's a lot of other people. Go to an arcade. Arcades are fun as hell. Play some skee-ball against each other or something. It's, it's fairly cheap, you know? Go, go to a public place, a park where there's lots of people, you know, make that person not feel isolated, feel so that they feel comfortable, but also that, you know, if they wanted to leave, it's not weird and that they, they don't have to feel like they have to escape, right? Because some people honestly might want to leave a date and you might not even be like creepy. They might just be like, to be honest, I'm really not vibing. I kind of want to go. And they might make up an excuse and leave and make that person feel that that is an option that they have because you know what? Not everybody vibes with each other and, you know, I mean, if I was on a date and I'm trying to act nice and everything and this person makes up an excuse to leave, I'd probably be like, oh, I'm disappointed. I'm sorry that you feel that way, um, but sure, go on your way. I mean, I'd probably be pretty disappointed, but at the end of the day, that's their choice, right? And then obviously, if they want to leave you on this date, they're obviously not going to be that good for you anyways, right? So this next one comes from that interview, 4005. She told me she wanted to dine and dash pretty much as soon as we ordered drinks. I've never dined and dashed before. If I ever did, it was by accident. There were a couple of times where I can remember like, oh my God, did I pay for that? And I did not do it on purpose. I'm not sure if I actually did pay for it or not. I'm still actually not sure if I ever paid for it or not. It's happened to me actually kind of recently. But um, I hope I did. I definitely hope I did. But um, dine and dash, I don't understand. What's the point? What's the point of dining and dashing? I really, I really don't get it. Is it really that big of a like, like if you want to dine and dash, like I'll pay. Like it's not that big of a deal, right? Like it's you know, twenty to forty dollars most meals anywhere from. I mean, it's probably more like forty to sixty by the time everything. But forty, sixty bucks, maybe seventy bucks with a drink. I mean, like that's not your entire life, man. That's not your entire life. All the money you could possibly earn an entire lifetime. It's not that much. Um. Okay, so, oh yeah, this one I think is pretty weird. So, um, this one comes from user Front Crabs. Meet a girl at a bar and things clicked well. I've always heard negative things like, don't ever meet your significant other <laughs> at a bar. Um, meet a girl at a bar, things clicked and went well. Went on a date, a few nights later she shows up with her quote-unquote sister. I didn't think anything of it at the time. Figured she was being safe, possibly, since we just met. But this happened two more times. I finally said, can we go out without your sister? And she seemed insulted at the idea. I found out months later, she had no sister. It was just her friend, and they did everything together. It was truly strange. So, yeah, so th that's very weird. I don't know, man. I feel like if you're that codependent on somebody, either you're in love with them, or you are codependent and that's a negative thing that you should probably cut out of your life. Alrighty. So I, I don't know, guys, I think I kind of want to end it there today. Uh, maybe this is, maybe this is the last one I'll go. This one's pretty short. So this one is from weekly basil, uh, user weekly basil 10 minutes in and he was <laughs> 10 minutes in and he was checking out the two women at the table next to us, like hardcore staring, peeking. Oh my God. Around the booth wall around the booth wall until they looked at him uncomfortably. That is so horrible. So horrible. Guys, get a grip on yourselves. Come on. Like, really? Really? You're going to, like, start looking at somebody else on a, like, when you're on a date? Like, come on, bro. That is, that is some whack, that's some whack shit. You got some, you got some stuff, to, stuff to work on. Why would you even bother going on a date in the first place if you, that's what you're going to do? Like, you, you obviously have very little self-awareness if you're able to, not, you know, not be able to realize, oh, I'm staring at these people. You know, maybe I should stop doing that while I'm actually on a date with somebody else. Um, I haven't been on a date in actually quite a while, though. So, I mean, obviously, I would never do this on a date, but uh, this is just making me think. This whole episode is making me think I haven't been on a date in quite some time. So, geez, I'm going to, I mean, I guess COVID and everything. So, I'm excited. I like, I like dates. Dates are fun, especially with, like, cool things like going to an arcade, going for a walk, going for a picnic, stuff like that. That's fun. You know, honestly, and, and do dates with your friends too, guys. Do dates with your friends. Dates with your friends are fun. Guy friends, girlfriends, everything friends, okay? Do date things with your girlfriends. And or not, sorry, do date things with your friends, no matter what gender or sexual orientation they may belong to. Whether you're attracted to them or not, 
go on little dates with your friends. It's so fun. Just go to little restaurants together, check things out. It's it's fun. It's a great bonding experience. And uh, it, it gives you great ideas for dates that you could actually participate in when you do have the opportunity to go on an actual date. Uh, you might actually have some dry runs, which is important because sometimes you can be very nervous going on a date. And it's sometimes better to know that, oh, I've done this before with my friends. This will be fun. So, because you never know, sometimes doing doing something spontaneous on a first date can end up like being really awkward and weird and kind of strange, and it might sour uh, uh, otherwise uh, good relationships. So, you never know. But we could talk about relationships forever, folks. So, I uh, appreciate you guys listening in for the twenty minute episode today. I uh, really appreciate you guys listening. I know you guys tune in every week. You guys are so awesome. You guys are the coolest people ever, man. You guys are the super cool. I can't believe you guys. It's, it's honestly crazy. I, I seriously, sometimes I, it just makes me emotional. Like I'm like, I seriously can't believe like that 60, 70 of you guys every month, like just like listen to my show. Like I would say this is like our show. Like this is our show, guys. It's not my show. It's our show. It's so cool. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's it's so unbelievable. You guys listen to it, the show. It's I'm gl- I'm glad you guys like it. I'm glad you guys come back and enjoy the episodes. It's uh, it's fun. I, I really enjoy doing it. It almost feels like a little bit of a journaling device sometimes because I actually know that I'm like talking to people, so it's fun. Um, but I, at the time, I still get to have a little bit of inner dialogue, and I like telling stories. I like telling stories on this podcast. Um, not everyone's about stories, but you know, give and take. All right, guys, uh, we'll wrap it up there today. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, you know, if you're watching or listening on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave a rating and review. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok. I read ask us podcast repost clips of the show. Okay, everybody and my friends on the internet, I'm your host, Luke Dick. Peace out.